honoring some people we lost over the last couple of weeks. Uh, did did your mom always say like my mom about the bad things happen in threes? Yes. Oh, for sure. Right, and for sure. which is a cliche, but it kind of feels like it happens that way, yeah. and. Uh, that's what happened. I guess we'll do this chronologically because that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm not going to, by the way, this is not going to turn into a funeral. The, the reason I'm doing this, I want to bring up the, the happy and positive sides of all these people. Um, we were at the Masters, Puff and I, is it last week, two weeks ago? Puff, I'm lost. Two weeks ago. And I guess it was day one of the Masters Thursday. We're on the air with our bonus coverage, and I got a call from Tina uh, from Minnesota, Jonathan's mom, that's saying that Jonathan had passed away. Uh, which caught me off guard for sure, only because I hadn't talked to Tina in a couple of weeks, and I know he'd had some setbacks, but he's he's had setbacks for the yeah, last. Yeah, that's sort of ever, that's his sure. life. Yeah, for sure. and so you, even though we always knew that it was a possibility, I didn't see it coming that fast. And what happened is he he, he had a couple of major setbacks and went downhill in a hurry in hospital and passed away, and. That was a tough one, just because uh, you know I've talked about it on the podcast before. And did you get a, you get a chance to meet him, Lester? I can't remember. I, I've never met him. You never got a chance no, to meet him when he no, came into TSN. No, uh, just the most inspirational kid ever. And when we had him on our Christmas show here yep. on, here on the pod, yes. And this is going to be heartbreaking to listen to because that that was probably the most positive things had been in the last two years for Jonathan. Uh, if, if for some reason you don't know the story or haven't listened to that episode, uh, Jonathan Pitcher is a good friend of everybody at TSN. He was diagnosed with a disease called EB, which is one of the most painful diseases known to mankind. Uh, they call them butterfly children because their skin is like the skin of a butterfly and basically any touch of it and it tears apart. And so he's sort of wrapped head to toe in bandages. He went down to Minnesota for a stem cell transplant that they hoped would ease his condition, never cure him, but let him have somewhat of a normal life. And when we interviewed him just before Christmas time, it was the most positive things had been. He had started to grow new skin. And I think the clip that Christoph's going to play was talking about walking. He'd been stuck in the wheelchair for the better part of the last few years and had finally uh, been able to walk again. A big milestone for us, for me, um, I think it was two days ago. Mm-hmm. And for the first time since we've come back, and for the first time in a long time, instead of taking my wheelchair to walk somewhere, I walked with mom. Ah, that's um, amazing. So we went from the truck to the, um, uh, I mean, from our apartment to the truck and back. And they only had to take one little uh, breather, and that was like halfway through the first. Um, the first part of the walk, and I only stop for maximum five seconds. And then today, um, uh, I walk from the car to breakfast and breakfast to the car again. So I'm we're really working hard. Like I'm soon going to be able to start actual physio again. And so I'm hoping that by the time we get home, I'll be a completely new person. That was Jonathan back in December, and unfortunately, a couple of weeks after that, he he had a couple of setbacks and never really got on the road back. I went to see him at Super Bowl, yeah, and you know, still so positive and and still so upbeat, but at the same time, I could tell, I think that he was, he was just tired. You know, he wanted he just wanted to get home and be with his dog. He has a little Boston Terrier named Gibson, and uh, I just. He wasn't defeated. He wasn't defeated in any sense. I think like he still still was trying, but they pushed back the timetable another six months for him to come back. So anyway, I just it. Uh, I think Jonathan's un- unfortunately the timing, and we'll get into Humboldt in a second. You know, Jonathan passed away, and, and the next day it became public, and uh, then Humboldt happened, yeah. and and I think Jonathan's story got lost a little bit, understandably, because of the size and depth of the Humboldt of tragedy. Yeah. But I want to do whatever we can to keep uh, his memory alive, because I think the, the, the most amazing thing that came out of this, uh, f- when Jonathan was 13 a few years ago when we first met him, he lived his whole life really quietly, very normal, and then decided to tell his story. And what came out of him telling his story? 
uh, not just for him. Like, he got to do a lot of amazing amazing things. He was a senator scout for a day. He got to come on the TSN panel. He got to go on stage at the NHL Awards. Uh, he got to meet his favorite sci-fi writer, this guy that he's read all his books. The cast of The Flash met him and sent him. It, like, all these incredible things happened to him. But he didn't really care about that. All he really cared about was raising awareness for the cause. And suddenly, you know, a lot of Canadians now know what EB is. He raised hundreds of yeah, thousands hundreds of dollars. For sure, yeah. Like, people yeah. didn't know that disease. So I think that's that's what I keep clinging to out of a positive. It, is this, it's just spectacular what this guy did in four years. Like, more than most of us do in a lifetime, well, what he, he's accomplished. You know what? You know, it, I think the thing for me when I look at it, too, is... You know what? Here's this guy that that since essentially from day one has been in pain, mm -hmm. and uh, that is hard to fathom on its own. And you know, people like yourself and what we've done here, and people talking about him and t talking about the awareness is really important. But you know, it just goes back for, for me specifically. You know, all these little things that we think are issues in our lives. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. They're nothing. nothing. You know what I mean? And it's That's it's just... awful that it takes somebody like Jonathan to maybe make you feel better about your life that that shouldn't be what it is but if that's something you know he i it's, talked to him about that he didn't mind that yeah it's a byproduct you know of, what? Of, if, of him if, if story, he made yes. people appreciate you know their lives more that was okay with him sure. which i think is another amazingly cool thing that he did so we're going to miss the hell out of jonathan pitcher who was just uh just an amazing amazing kid and our prayers go to his mom tina who now has to get on with her life when she's dedicated her entire life, essentially. That's who I was really thinking about. Yeah, yeah I'm cause... thinking about her, and, and you know, as much as uh, I'm, I'm sure she's sad, part of me is, is you know, I'm grateful that she's going to be able to get on with her life right. and do some That's going to take some time. Gonna, I, I, I met with sure her in Ottawa last her. week. We spent some time together, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's obviously going through an, an awful time. Jonathan was her life for the last... Mm -hmm. uh, but she's got a daughter, and... Um, yeah, you're right. She maybe can have some sort of normal life.